Okay, so feel free to, to interact with me. And um, Okay, so I'm just going to relay vegetarianism and meat and spiritual practice. Thank you, thank you very much, yeah. Vegetarian and meat and spiritual practice. It's one of the big things in spirituality, actually, food. There's some big ones, common ones, like food, sex, money. Mm. You know, where if you're like trying to go on the spiritual path, food, sex and money, like what does spirituality mean in relationship to those things? And those are the big ones. Mm. And, um, uh, okay, so I'm going to just, one of my teachers is Dr. David R. Hawkins. Mm. And he, uh, I'm just going to, uh, and I, he's one of my main teachers, and he said some interesting stuff. So everything in the world is a belief system. Okay, so, so, uh, one of the things I do is I cancel my belief in any belief that I think is limiting me. I'm an infinite being. I'm only subject to the beliefs in limitation that I hold in mind. So in truth, my, my essence, or me without my ego, my, my small self, is infinite and is not subject to... Um, to limitation by the limited world, yes? But if I believe, within my ego, if I have a belief that something in the world can affect me, then it will, okay? So the collective, uh, the, collect the collective consciousness of the world has certain belief systems, which, certain, certain, which are, some of them are very general across the globe, some of them are country specific, some of them are religion specific, some of them are new, new uh, sort of scientific, uh, scientifically specific. So there's all types of belief systems you can pick up about what's good and what's bad for you and if they can actually affect you positively or negatively. But ultimately um, as, you, as you let go of all limiting ideas, when you let go of a limiting idea you're no longer subject to it. That's the the spiritual, uh, the Course in Miracles says that, my spiritual teacher says that, it's also been my experience that as I cancelled my belief in things, um, they had no negative effect on me. So I'm going to get, now, now we're talking about like meat and vegetables. Hmm. There, there's different thing with meat and vegetables. I mean, there's one is like you're harming animals, and one is like it's not good for you, your health. I think those are the two, two things. So it's a spiritual thing. To, I mean, I eat meat, so I'll say that straight away. And it's a good question. It's like, well, what about all those animals? You know, what about those animals? So that's a, that's a very valid question. What about, well, it's not good for your health. You know, if you, if you have your veggies, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be more healthy and more happy. And, and yeah, there's a thing, like, there's lots of different belief systems. Like, if you have vegetables, it'll elevate, uh, you purify your body, and you'll be more connected to God. That's a belief. Or... Um, yeah, also, uh, so I remember someone saying to me, oh, you have the, the dying vibrations of the animal. So it'll just like, uh, you, know, you know, they died in fear, you'll have fear if you, if you eat it. So, okay, but that for me is like a, also a belief. Also, if you have a belief or you share a belief with a, with a collective, then that's what happens for you. That's what a belief is. Like if I believe that, um, if I believe that uh, this is bad for me, then in this way, if I believe that and I, and I, and I eat it, then it will be. That's the self-fulfilling thing of what beliefs actually manifest, what your beliefs actually manifest. So here's the thing though, um, to, to illustrate. So, okay, the thing with eating animals and, it, you know, the harm done. So. Muscle testing or kinesiology uh, is a way to access the truth about things. So people, people can go to their local muscle tester, kinesiologist, and check out. Don't take my word for it. Go, go and go to your muscle tester. But uh, in, the, in the ancient Indian text, the Rig Vita, uh, the really Hawkins said, there, there's a line that um, when li a life sacrifices its life for a higher life form, uh, it gains the karmic merit to to elevate to that to that 
form of life through sacrifice. And uh, so, so this happens. At, this would be for me happening on a spiritual level. So, like, let's say the soul of an animal is to give its life to be reared in the farm, to then give its life over, its its life over for the sacrifice for a higher life. It then gains the karmic merit to then move on to that higher life form because it's like sacrificed it was like sacrificed for a, it sacrifices life in service to a higher uh, life form so to then uh, so then to uh, and also the um, I remember Hawkins talking about like the, Ind the Red Indians they intuited this so they would say a little prayer of thanks mm to the animal spirit. Mm. Thank you for giving your, mm. your life for my life, my higher life, and we, we give thanks for your sacrifice. Mm. And this is like, uh, Christians give grace, thank mm. you Lord for, for, the, for, for our meat, for the meat and the animals that are sacrificed. So there is a kind of a spiritual wisdom, but there's a kind of like a ladder system, where when, when the spirit or the soul of, of a life form gives it, at the spiritual level, it gives us life in service to a higher life. It, it gains like a, this, this world of duality, you know, is like sacrificing for something higher, then giving you the karmic merit to go higher later on, you see. So that then undid my thing of like, oh, it, it, it's, it's wrong. Because it's like, you know, also, obviously we find like humans who want to become enlightened, they sacrifice their life, or even if a saint will sacrifice their self-centered ideas of what life should be for a higher principle. Uh, for enlightenment, you sacrifice the life of the ego for union with God. So it's, it's like it's a holographic thing to give service. There the animal is giving its meat in service, but you know later on it will probably get the karmic merit to leave the animal kingdom and, and evolve up to the next level. Uh, of it, so, so that's the thing of then, then that let go of the guilt. You see, let go of the guilt. Oh, you see, you're, you're, we, I should just live on, be vegetarian, because the, the whole world should become vegetarian, and no animal should be sacrificed, no animal should have. But then, uh, if if animals are gaining, um, if this world is for karmic growth for every life form to go on up to a higher stage. In its in its karmic journey, that's part of the, you know the, like it was said, like if everyone here in this world became became enlightened, you could say like divinity would have to create another world, where people at different levels of consciousness would find the the car the diversity, of different different strata within a world to make choices. You see, so. So that's the thing with the the animal. So I do eat meat. Uh, myself. So the, the other thing is like belief systems. Well, meat is bad for you. You know, if you live on vegetables, you, you do. The other thing, I mean, that, that for me is a belief system. Like if I pick up the belief that meat, meat is bad for you, or it will do bad, you know, there's lots of beliefs about red meat, uh, the different belief systems around fish, different belief systems around organic, all of these belief systems. I mean, like Hawkins was, was I mean, I think it was, it was, I think if I talk a little bit about, I can talk about a little bit about Hawkins and my own experience. Well, I'll talk about my own experience. Was like, he vegetarian? No. No, he was not vegetarian. Mm. Uh, he was uh, not? No. No, no, not vegetarian. He uh, would like, I think you could say he would like to make jokes, like he has beef burgers and Pepsis and everything. But, um... So do you think if you eat, like, junk yeah. food every day, and it cancel that belief, of junk food being bad for you, do you think you won't get any diabetes and cardiovascular disease? Okay, kind of? okay, so um, let me give you some stories, yeah, mm. from my experience. So, like, uh, one of the things you can do is eat, do things and cancel your belief they have any adverse effects. Mm. That's one of the things I teach. You know, like, so I, I had a transplant and I was given um, 13 medication. And I have proof of this, so this is something I can prove with my doctor's lists of medication. They went down from 13 to 1 
in the space of about approximately two and a half years. So I have like, after the transplant, 13 medications and then like two and a half years, one. And I just, I just took the medications and I said, uh, I can't my belief in the adverse effects of medication. You know, like, uh, uh, you know, I'm an infinite being, or God did not create ne adverse effects for medication, so it's not real. You know, and so I just pop them in, but cancel my belief they have any side effects. And within, uh, and then one by one, they, they were being removed from me. And then uh, within about two and a half, three years, you know, I, I remember this day, I think it was a mystical day, so that I could share this story with others. The consultant, uh, the, my consultant at the Royal Free Hospital said, when he saw that I just had now one medication left from 13, uh, he, said, uh, he, he said to me, and I knew this was a miracle, he said, like, I don't know if anyone else in the hospital is taking less medication as a transplant patient, you know. And the, um, and the, and the, and the, um, uh, the pharmacist said, you put us out of business, because I was hardly taking any medic For a transplant patient to be taking one medication is almost like, I guess it was like unheard of. So if you just, like all the people that believe that they have side effects and that you need them would be carrying on taking them. But as you let go of this stuff in your head, then it was like grace was t taking away the adverse effects. So that, I think that's the miraculous thing of if you believe something, then you're subject to it. If you, if you let go of the belief, like nothing outside of you has any negative of impact on you. Okay. okay. So the, uh, yeah. And in terms of like... Uh so, uh, uh, two things. So you, you recognize humans as being a higher being than animals, mm -hmm. higher beings than. Animals. Well, I, I think I think well the the, he, the he, what I'm saying about that because humans can have a low level of consciousness and a high level of consciousness, but they have mm -hmm. they have the capacity to make choices to go all the way up to enlightenment. Mm -hmm. You know, so even if I come in, like let's say I incarnate. At, um, at a low level of consciousness, very ego level of consciousness. Let's say I'm a, I'm a drug addict and I'm robbing, I don't know, I'm, 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 let's say I'm a food addict and I'm stealing donuts from the local bakery. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a low level of consciousness, but let's say uh, I bump into someone from a spiritual group, like a 12-step group, and they say, look, they, yeah, there's a better way of life and I do that. In, in a human body, with a human consciousness, I can go all the way from like a, a, a donut thief to Buddha in one lifetime, mm -hmm. you know? Because I can speak to Buddha, maybe Buddha's at my local group, and I can go from a donut thief in this human body to enlightenment in one life. Like a cow is probably not gonna meet a Buddha cow. Mm. <laughs> That's funny, <laughs> you know? <laughs> The cow's in the okay. field and it says, look, speak to that cow over there yeah. okay. and go for satsang. And so, I get you. I get you. So, so no, humans can be, you know, humans can be horrific. But, right. but, but being, in the, being born in a human body in this world gives you opportunities for enlightenment, which, I, uh, which a cow wouldn't have. Okay, and, okay, so two things, environmental impact that um, a non-vegan um, approach has in terms of, you know, it's collapsing a lot of different things in the world. Um, you know, I, I could go on and on and talk about mm -hmm. the rainforests and people say, oh, that's soy for vegan, but actually that's soy for cattle and all of that. So all of that right there, that, you know, with the water and all of that. And another thing, just, yeah. um, mm -hmm. what is the other thing? Oh. When I think like, and I've I've I come from a country and I used to spare fish and all of that. Every oh, time yes. I had to kill a fish, uh, there was something there. Yeah, I understand. I was, if I had to kill a cow. Yeah. And I don't know if I could do it to survive. Uh, I would probably I had to, but nowadays we don't really need to do that to survive. Mm -hmm. So many options. So why paying someone to do it and. Do you also think that it has no um, impact eating something, with not something, no, somewhere or whatever, but eating a, a, a cow has been in, in this awful conditions, you know, eating cow that has been uh, 
artificially inseminated for like the past 20 years in something that they call the rape rack, which is really how they call it. And then it, it turns, you know, suffering. And it turns into meat. He's thinking it has... I'm really, I'm not... I'm really curious about this because I've been judgmental a lot in the past. Nowadays, I'm just... I'm just curious. Well, I mean, curiosity is a good, is a good attitude. I mean, it's the thing of... Uh, I sort of see the world as um, uh, is, this is not a heavenly realm. Mm. This is a, a place where I get to make uh, not just choices. You know, you could you know there, there's a there's choice there's choices which my ego is making, but there's a higher reason why my ego is in this world. And certain things are necessary for me to pay off my karma. Mm. You see. So if I didn't need to pay off any karma, then I wouldn't be here. You know, I, would, I wouldn't have been even incarnated within a dual realm, where separation even exists. So that I'm here means it is a requirement that certain situations arise for a spiritual opportunity. So just to sort of, um, um, like, if we... Um, if this, I mean, it's okay if this world evolves to like a celestial or enlightened realm, but all the spirits that need a place where there is duality and choices to make will not be able to come here. So, you know, I mean, this world is a world where there is the most horrific stuff happening, but it's also, it's also why spirits incarnate here. You know, or if, if they wouldn't, they would have to like incarnate in another planet and in another part of the universe where they would have, the spirit would have that type of situation to incarnate into so that the thing, so, so every, every situation that I've had uh, that's been bad uh, has, been, has been necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and just... Uh, I could say like this world should not have any of this stuff and uh, make and you know everyone is making the best choice they can and that's fine but as you get to different levels of understanding mm. then your choices become different I mean if I believed that it was bad then I wouldn't eat it mm. but if I if I believe that this is a this is a perfect world for karmic growth and um, karmic choices and that um, there is the universe. The world is set up for for sacrificing to a higher ideal for karmic growth. Then you see it differently. The, uh, did that answer that question? I don't know if it answered that question. So I, I don't. I don't. You know. I do. I do. I mean, yes. They, they may have. They may have rough. I don't. But I don't necessarily see. You know, see that I was born into environments that my ego probably didn't like. You know, but that was necessary. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, I, 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 but that was necessary for me to, to learn some things and have some karmic opportunities for, as I'm sure my spirit incarnated into certain, certain, some of the circumstances not so nice, but that was necessary so that I could make a higher choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, and I think you can't, um, but everyone, you know, whatever, whatever is good. I mean, in terms of environmentalism, no, we're gonna, I'm going to probably piss a lot of people off, <laughs> but it's okay. I mean, environment, I, think, I think, you know, make, always make the choice that you think is the highest choice, and everyone does that. Mm -hmm. But for me, um, the highest choice is to evolve myself mm -hmm. rather than save the planet. It doesn't mean that I don't do what is naturally, intuitively do, but to go out of my way, you know, for, you know like to go, for me to live a life where I'm going to tell other people or be an activist mm. uh, and try and educate other people on how bad they are. Mm. Um, for me, it's something I just wouldn't, I would not take up the environmental flag mm. and tell everyone, you know, how they should be living their life. Because for me, the way to be of maximum use in this world is for me to become, to spiritually grow myself, to get to enlightenment. So, like, uh, from, from, uh, Kinesiologic research, the muscle testing, mm. like um, 
from, from, you know, it's like one enlightened teacher counterbalances the negativity of something like um, several million people in negativity, you know. So for me just to do the inner spiritual work and to radiate out that light into the universe by transcending my own ego and my perceptions of the world means that, pe you know, like having Buddha, if you had Buddha in London, like probably thousands of people would not commit suicide today. You know, uh, the, all those gangs that were suddenly wanting to like kill each other would suddenly like find a peaceful resolution just by having Buddha sitting in the middle of London, not doing anything, just his his light emanating out into the vibration, collective vibration mm. of the world. Or I could not do the, my spiritual work and go out and make sure some environmental thing happens that everyone does this thing to save the planet. So I'm not saying that's bad, but I'm saying that the, the greatest use I can have is to clean me yes. than, to, than to hold the flag up for something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, I've been, and I've been there and it's a whole lot of separation. And it's a whole, the isms and all of that, yeah. it's a whole lot of separation. And there's a, a huge paradox where I, I lived in, which I'm trying to be compassionate for animals, but I'm being really not compassionate for my uh, the animal in front of me that happens to be a human that's true, yeah. you know what I mean so there is there is a lot of separation there and, and, uh, and all the, that movement the vegan movement all that so you reckon that uh, it may be very personal too as in one spiritual journey and spiritual uh, insights might draw him from eating certain things and maybe eating others or like... What? Yeah, I mean every, everyone just, I mean everyone naturally will choose the right thing. Mm. But when you get new new perceptions, new understandings, then things that you thought, you know, like when I, you know, to, um, to see that um, this world is a ga gateway for, for spiritual advancement, mm. yeah, so um, so that the animal soul gets the chance to evolve to a higher, a higher life form, then, then it's like, and the world is set up for karmic growth. So um, then, you know, and I think probably intuitively the Red Indians and the and Christians probably saw that it's not to ban the eating of meat. Or the Red Indians saw it's not to just eat vegetables. They saw that's part of the karmic this is part of the school of the makeup that the animal serves the human and then gains the karmic privilege to incarnate into the whole world is set up for sacrifice to a higher ideal in some shape or form so you're you're facilitating uh, the purpose of of this school this karmic school is uh, facilitating a certain thing like we need people who are food addicts to come in. Mm. They need to come into this, it, be born food addicts here because this is the perfect place for them. They need to have like donuts here and to be food food addicts and then to find God, you know. So it's not to like, you know. So otherwise, if you ban donuts from the world, then they have to go somewhere else to another another world. You see. In that in that way, so. So you, you see, you know, like a miracle is just a, a different way in how you see it. But, mm. but if you see it like it's just animal cruelty, then yes, then don't eat meat, of course. You know, it's just as you... The other thing is like, you know, like Hawkins had uh, hypoglycemia. hypoglycemia. So when he would eat sugar, he'd have the shakes. Mm. So he just cancelled his belief in hypoglycemia. Really? Uh, yeah, cancelled belief. And then he could have hot fudge sundaes, chocolates and things yeah. and all of that. And it was fine, you see. Then, <laughs> then, uh, and then, because it's just a belief. Even though everyone believes it, that there's such a thing as sugar and the shakes and everything, it's just a collective belief within humanity. If you cancel it, you're not. So he had an allergy, he had an allergy to poison ivy. So every time he'd pick up poison ivy, he'd get like an allergic rap. So he just canceled the belief in poison ivy. Then you can pick up the thing and have no, no, no thing. I have, so, a, hard, I have a hard time believing. Yeah, oh. I would have to experience or see it, as, uh, but I, I keep an uh, open mind, definitely. Yeah, 
So, uh, I mean, I've, I've been experienced, like this, this thing with the medication, it's like a miracle, you know, the, that I've witnessed just by cancelling belief. You, ha you have to like, when you, cancel, you, when you cancel your belief in something, you're going into, you're connecting to the infinite, mm -hmm. yeah? The infinite is not subject to limitation in this world. Okay, so when you get, when you get to the, when you, like, in, in the classical Indian literature, you have the cities of siddhas. You know, where uh, people can levitate, be, you know, spontaneous miraculous healings, to be at two places at the same time. These kind of things have been documented. They defy what is understood at lower levels of consciousness, you see. And it cannot be understand, uh, understood by, by the mind. Because well, if, if I don't understand, if the mind doesn't understand the concept of inf inf infinity, yeah. It cannot understand. That's why Muji a lot of times, you know, talks about the spaciousness. Yes. And that I cannot get into that spaciousness through mind. That's right. There's no way. I, I have. It will happen. And it will happen, but it's not because if I, I try, I'm trying to. I'm trying to get into that spaciousness. I'm trying. That doesn't really. No, no. You, you know, the the the, the ego sees things in terms of yeah. causality, mm -hmm. and that the world. Uh, the world is, the, I mean, everything happens due to cause and effect within the world that's perceived. But that's not where the power is. The power is in letting go of the world and accessing the infinite power. Mm -hmm. So if you sort of see, if you sort of see like I'm a real object and, 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 uh, and, uh, and that's a real object and I as a real object have to interact with that real, that's causality. But if you let go of you being an, an object, then you access the infinite. And, if you, and the infinite is the source of all objects. So every law that objects believe is not applicable to when you're connected to the infinite. Mm -hmm. You see, so you can like... When I went to see Muji and I had my white light spiritual experience, I had like... Before then I went in with a gout attack in horrific pain. And then within... And he said, he, what's observing? Yeah. What's a, and then suddenly there was a white light. And then suddenly like I, was, I went in on a dark day and suddenly it was like... It seemed like the world was sunlight. And the entire room was and, 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 and it was like sunlight. And then I forgot, it's like there was no memory that I had pain in my foot. I was just walking mm -hmm. out in bliss. So everything healed within one split second. That doesn't operate within the world of causality and science. science. You know, that, that's like, you know, you know like the, it, would, it would defy the, the ego's understanding of what the world is and how the world operates, which do, doesn't exist when you're connected to the realm of the infinite, you see, so, um, and, yeah, yeah. And I, it's interesting, I've seen that video again, and you, um, not the one there is saying, another one where Muji actually talks about that, that yes. it certainly, he said it was like listening to Buddha himself talk, yes, he started talking, and, and in that video, when you step in, you were really tired, yes, and after like 10 or 15 minutes, you're, it's completely different. Like you're totally, your energy goes up very much more. And you say it's not here anymore. Yes, that that broke my thing. You know, having that one. That, that I have. Uh, there is a DVD of me seeing and talking to Muji. And I came in, like brain fog, like exhausted, like this is a medical condition. You know, there's nothing. This is just. Like, this is real. This is like a medical mm -hmm. kidney failure. And then within a few seconds, it's like, whoa, there's tons of energy, there's yeah. clear mind, you know, like it never existed. So there's no such thing as tiredness. Like in a split second, even if you believe you've got a medical condition, you can be like full of energy and vitality and fully clear-headed. So that's like connecting to the infinite, you see. Not even a drug can do that, you know, mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the infinite power of God. So this is why the, e the ego can't believe it. Mm -hmm. Yes. But it's like, it's yeah. the order, I mean... In that, in that miraculous field, the infinite field, all miracles are possible. It's uh, funny you said it. I'm, I'm looking, you are looking at Maharshi there. Yes. And it's funny how a lot of people would, he wouldn't say much. Uh, I, was, I was looking, I was watching his documentary, the, the documentary. Yes. So he wouldn't say much. Actually, he would say really, actually, almost nothing. And people would come to him with a lot of questions. Yeah. Yeah, you know, duality kind of realm questions, and then at a certain point they would just 
go silent, and then mm. after a while they'll start to in, in, intuitively have having this God consciousness just to be by being near him. That's